Hello, I'm Linda Ann Smith, video creator for Color Art at ColorArt.com. Today's video is going to be an experiment, which is not too unusual on my uh, YouTube channel, but I just received some Pauper Paul in the mail, and I am going to use this. This is the clear Pauper Paul. I've spilled some on the outside already investigating it. I'm wearing gloves because I'm going to go out later. You know how I hate gloves. Hello, everybody. But um, I'm just going to play with this and see what happens. This is bleached muslin. I also bought some unbleached muslin that I'll show you in a moment, but the bleached muslin, I cut it into some, several different strips. And then I have this, um, we used to call this fabric whipped cream. I had a little piece of, of this sheer turquoise fabric. I always have to get turquoise in my compositions. This is a piece of an old scarf that I bought at Goodwill. I never wear this color. It's, it looks horrible on me. So, um, I'm, I cut it up and I'm going to use it on this project. And uh, I've got a little dipper here. If I needed to dip out some of the Pauver Paul, I'll use that. Uh, today I'm going to be using some primary elements. The Pauver Paul that I have is the clear Pauver Paul. That's what I'm going to be using today. And uh, I picked out this particular color scheme to go with the other two colors that I have in the uh, scarf and the fabric. I very deliberately chose colors close to each other on the color wheel, uh, related colors, and you'll see why as I go along later. So later on, I will be using this iridescent violet in the primary elements. I'll also be using apple blossom. I will use mystique. And the last color that I've chosen so far is Plumeria. Now, this Pauver Paul is brand new to me, so this is an experiment. You're used to me doing experiments anyway. I'm always experimenting with my art. So we'll just see what works. I haven't tried anything. I haven't tested anything out. I'm going to do that in the video. The one thing I did do before I started the video was I kind of took some of that foam wrapping, like, well, actually the Pauver Paul came wrapped in it. I took some foam wrapping and put it around the cardboard. Now I'm taking some unbleached muslin and uh, taping it down, kind of like stretching a, uh, ca a canvas on a frame. I'm not going to go to that much trouble, though. I'm not going to be careful with the corners here. I'm just going to get it on here so that it will have something uh, as a substrate because I'm going to try I haven't seen anyone do this but I'm going to try doing a collage type of uh, work with it just to get used to how to work with the Pauver Paul. I'm going to use a little plastic dish to put my Pauver Paul in because I want to keep the Pauver Paul covered up so that it won't dry out. My research tells me that Pauver Paul won't stick to plastic. That's one reason that I'm using the plastic dishes and plastic spoons. Also, uh, it's the reason that I use that uh, foam type plastic underneath the cloth base that I'm going to glue this to. Now, I'm kind of spooning this on and I'm going to stretch it out on the canvas. It really stuck together more than I expected it to. Pretty powerful product. And since I'm going to treat this like a collage, I'm going to put down a layer of glue first, or a layer of Pauver Paul first, and spread it out before I uh, put my fabric on. And I can just shape my fabric however I want to. I definitely want some texture to be left in it. But I'm just going to play with the fabric and make an abstract design first and see where we go from there. If you're afraid to get your hands messy or afraid to get your gloves messy, then you probably won't like this, but I don't have a problem with that. I understand that it peels right off of your fingers just like Elmer's glue. And from teaching school, I know that the kids all love to put glue on their fingers and peel it off. It's my understanding that it comes off your hands really easy with warm soapy water, but I haven't tried it yet. I'm going out in just a few minutes, and so I'm covering my hands this time as much as these gloves make me uncomfortable, I'm wearing them. 
I'm going to get started here first with all of my cool colors and since I have the um, this kind of jade green color and uh, the turquoise color in the fabric I don't have to do anything to those and I'm going to use that as my background just to get started just making an abstract today abstracts are really my favorite so I'm kind of going back to where I enjoy the most the the area of art that makes me the most excited. I'm working first with the pre-colored fabrics because I'm <laughs> I want to put those down, get them done, and then get to the ones where I add uh, primary elements to the pauper pulp. I'm really anxious to see what that's going to do. You know, I wonder. Uh, this is supposed to dry clear, and I'm wondering if it'll dry clear enough that it will bring back that uh, shimmer in all of the color art products. Uh, that's one of the most important things in color art for me is that I get that gorgeous shimmer. So we'll see. I do expect, and we'll see when I get to that, but I do expect when I first mix it that I won't see any shimmer because when you mix white with uh, any kind of uh, mica, it kind of kills that shimmer. So I'm hoping that when it dries and it turns back clear, that the shimmer, we will regain the shimmer in it. We'll see. As I said, it's an experiment. I'm placing all of these pieces on this uh, background uh, randomly, but not haphazardly. I'm kind of thinking about a composition as I go. I want it to flow diagonally. As you can see, I'm putting most of the pieces in a diagonal form. Even though I consider myself somewhat of a spontaneous artist, I still try to keep in mind things like composition what, and color flow and that sort of thing. So it's not a haphazard thing that's going on here now. I've started adding my turquoise pieces, and as you can see, I'm trying uh, putting the pauper pole on my hand and rubbing it out. So I'm going to try different methods with how to place the pauper pole on the fabric, as well as uh, just general experiment here. Okay, the gloves are bothering me. I'm going to take a chance. I tossed those gloves in the trash, and we're going to see how well I do with just my fingers. And uh, I don't have the best manicure anyway. I'm between manicures, so I don't have to worry too much about it. As long as I can get it off of my hands before I go out. It's almost time for me to leave the house, so what I'm going to do is just leave this overnight because I don't uh, have time when I come back home tonight to work on it, and we'll see what happens. Wow, look at those colors. They came back. It's not completely dry. There are some places that haven't dried. Where you see the dark green, that's just multi-layers, but where you see the white areas on top of the, the turquoise, then that's still damp and needs some more drying time. But I think it's okay from what I've read and what I've seen to go ahead and start working on it some more. So today I get to work with the primary elements. Yep, that's one gloved hand and one non-gloved hand. I thought maybe if I tried it this way, I would have one clean hand somewhere to manipulate my camera. I'm starting with the apple blossom color and I'll dip right into that and pull out some of that powder. It's making a nice soft pink and I'm doing these in a particular order. I'm using them in a particular order because I'm not gonna clean my bowl. I'm going to add one color on top of another and mix the colors as I go. I think I want this just a little bit darker though, so I'm adding a little bit more. My cat startled me just as I was starting starting to put that in, jumped on my feet, and I put it all over my canvas. So I use those happy mistakes, and we'll figure out what to do with the powder that's on in the lower left-hand corner there. I think just brush a little pauper pile over it and see what happens. Kind of turns it into a little paint. Hmm, I kind of like that. I may do some more of that. Now then, I'm using a brush today to apply the this to the fabric and I'm finding that the brush works really pretty well for me especially if it's long strips of fabric 
and then I can use the brush to put it down. Also, I'm using this little stirring stick. It's a little coffee stirring stick like you get at like Starbucks or something. And I'm going to try first a little wound up piece, which kind of just looks like a glob and it's not working very well for me. So I'm going to turn it and play with it a little bit and see how it looks. I kind of thought it was going to look like a rosebud. It didn't, so we're going to undo it and play with it in a different fashion. I did find that uh, I'm remembering to keep one hand fairly clean, although I'm getting it into the pauper pile every once in a while. I just keep a little damp cloth beside me and wash it off so that I can not get it all over my camera every time I touch my camera. So let's try a new little technique here and roll it back and forth on top of itself and make some little loops and see how that uh, works out when it dries. And again, now I'm using primary elements, so this is the, the time when I'm hoping that when this dries, my shimmer will return. Just like I expected, the shimmer just disappeared when I mix this uh, white puffer paw with it. But if it turns clear, I'm hoping that will come back. I like that little piece. I like the texture and I like the little loops in it. That's, that's a fun thing. By the way, I used the bleached muslin to dip into the pauper paw that was tinted with the color art product, the primary elements, because uh, that way I get a more pure color. Uh, the unbleached muslin has a little bit of a yellow color to it. I switched to the handle of an old paintbrush that had lost its uh, bristles and its ferrule, and I'm using that instead of the stirring stick. The stirring stick was a little bit too pliable for me to manipulate the way I wanted to. So I think this will work better for me. And just folding back and forth kind of accordion fashion. And I'm gonna roll backwards on this one. I'm gonna make a couple of attempts here until I get what I want. Okay, that looks better. I'm gonna lift that up a little bit so that it has those textures in it. I'm enjoying playing with this. Okay, now I told you that I'm going to add other colors to this, and that was the reason I chose related colors on the color wheel, colors close to each other on the color wheel, because I'm going now for the plumeria color. I'm adding plumeria to the pink, uh, the apple blossom color, and look what a rich, pretty color that is. Now, I'm not going to stir this up, because I may want to dip back into the apple blossom color, I'm not quite sure uh, if I want that color again or not, but I don't want to have to mix it if I do. So I'm going to cut a long skinny strip now. And I'm going to dip it right into this uh, Apple Blossom Plumeria mixture using my brush, pulling it along. You'll see that I'm getting some skips. I uh, just turn it over and dab it, put it back down in there. And this is working pretty well for me. Even if I get some of the pinkish uh, apple blossom color on there, that's, a, that's fine. That'll work. Since this plumeria mixture is a really nice warm color against these uh, cool colors, it's really going to help bring out that diagonal in my composition. I'm deliberately allowing this to touch other places on my canvas so that it gives me some of this color in other areas, even the areas where I'm not going to lay it down. It's kind of like when you see people taking a fan brush or a toothbrush and flipping the paint on. I want some of this color in other places, so I actually took my paintbrush and just used it like paint and uh, painted it onto some of the other areas. One of the reasons that I like to do voiceovers is because I get so lost in my work when I'm working that talking is a hazard. Talking is, is an interruption. I know what I'm doing, I think about what I'm doing, but talking about it kind of takes me away from the pleasure of creating. Okay, now I'm adding Mystique. See how I'm progressing from one color to another? I didn't add the bluish color at first, but I'm adding the Mystique now. 
and I haven't added the iridescent violet yet. I'm going to add that at the very last thing to give it some more shimmer on this canvas. Hopefully shimmer because I still don't see it dry. I still don't know what's happening as far as the shimmer goes. And I just couldn't resist using it as a little paint. Um, I guess I'm a painter at heart, but I sure am enjoying playing with this. And I filled in some of the edges of the canvas. I pulled it loose. I kind of have some ideas for what I'm going to do with this. So I want to extend some of the colors out. Uh, I had it wrapped around the cardboard at first, but I pulled it out and I'm adding just the pauper pole and the primary elements mixed together as paint. And that should stiffen it up a whole lot too. And it's possible that I'm going overboard with this and putting too much pauper pole on it. Uh, experiments are experiments. We'll find out. The one thing I do know, I'm loving this color scheme. Now off camera, I mixed some of this iridescent violet with the existing paint mixture that I had. <laughs> I guess it's a paint mixture. Um, and now I'm just spooning on little bits of this pauper pole mixed with, and, and it now has apple blossom, plumeria, mystique, and iridescent violet in it. And I'm just spooning that on in places. And now I'm adding some copper beads, little seed beads, to make centers of interest. I'm putting most of them near the center of the composition and a few scattered just here and there. But most of them go right in that area where I'm working, right there. I found it really easy to just touch the the uh, handle of this paintbrush that I'm using into the pauper pole and then touch it into the beads and it picks them up real easy and I don't have to fiddle with it with my fingers. Let me show you some close-ups of the finished product while it's still wet and then we'll compare that. Uh, I'm going to lay it outside. It's a nice sunny day and it's kind of windy outside so that should help it dry. And we'll compare that to what I get when I bring in the composition from the yard. It's my understanding that Paverpol needs a few days to cure and you need to give it more than just a few hours. But let's see what happened. I could not be happier. See all that shimmer the way it came back? It's really beautiful, and there's a few places that aren't completely dry, especially where I really puddled it, but uh, I think the shimmer is going to come back there, too. This would make a very festive wall hanging. I'm really pleased that I chose to leave some fabric around the edges that is not exposed to the pauper pole because it'll be easier for me to stitch into it. I am thinking that this is probably going to be part one. I'm going to put it away for a little while. But I'm going to come back to this and add some strings of beads and maybe a little fringy things here and there. Really happy with the pauper pole and the primary elements mixed. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and give me a comment below. Share and subscribe. That's really important to our YouTube channels to keep them going. And uh, there's all kinds of things that I'm going to list in the description box below, so don't miss the description box. Color Art has some uh, th Facebook pages where you can display your own art and some where you can find out about all the specials that they have on their products. I'll also be listing Pauver Paul's site and I'll list all of my personal sites so that you can find me. I really appreciate your time in this. I've had a really good time and hope you have too. Thank you so much for watching.